Их юм байгаа. Энэ нөгөө хөтөлбөр чинь манай хизээ нь яг хөлээ. Аа бодвотор ноён бодвотор хоёр төгтөр хэлнүүд. Эхлээд сайрагүл гэлэн сайрагүл дараа бодвотор хэлэн шүү дээ. Яг нөгөө төрүүшин тоогорснараа явж байгаа. Аа зөв зөв. Хөлтөп хэлэх. Тэр нэг юм Нөгөө юу гас сольж амсна амжаагүй бол хуушнараа л явуулж. Тэндээс тавьж өгөх ба. Саша явуулж явуулаг үү? Ирдэм мэлээ. Сольсо. Болсон гэсэн үү? Тийм болсон гэсэн. Авчаа гэсэн мэл хариу ирсэн мэлээ сая. Сая сая болж. Hello all. Hello. Ano? Hello, Ano? Uh, hello. Hi, Ano. Uh, okay. Yes, Hijaba. Hi, Dharmadi. Oh, uh, hi. How are you? How are you? How are you? Hi, Dharmadi. Do you hear me? Yeah, I, I can hear you. Yeah, we're just setting up this. <laughs> if we do. Okay, we're just setting it up. Yeah. Uh, and Dharmud, if you can check your email, I've sent you. Yeah, okay. Start with the okay. Um, we cannot own our video. Deep. This is deep side. Yeah. AIPP. Yeah. Yeah. No, we cannot own. Oh. 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 oh yeah. Sorry, sorry. This is. This is. Dan, Dan. Dan. Can you try out the translation anyway? The way that it works. Hello, can you hear me? This is the indicator. Just trying out. Oh. I don't think you can do the same. Sorry, no, no, it will be on. Uh, we need to change the setup. Video, yeah. Because Which one? our video is not on. You can try here in that room. You can any issue, say you are a person. I think she told you. I think that's all. Yes.
So we have now 33 participants. Uh, we will start in, in a few minutes now. Just a little wait, please. So our session will start in after two minutes, so 1.45. So just please wait one, two minutes more. <laughs> Geçin daha var sınavada bu ya.
Don't stop. Okay. We start our session. Yeah, colleagues, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming to our session. We are now, we have 40 participants attending to our session. Uh, we are welcome you to the breakout session on achieving resilient, resilient food systems and adapt to climate change through restoring grangeland and indigenous people's territories. The COVID-19 pandemic is big up call on our food system and that is advocate and promote resilient food system, securing the rights to land and the natural resources for indigenous people and pastoral communities. This breakout session is hosting by Central Asia Pastoral Alliance, Kappa, South Asia Pastoral Alliance, SAPA, and Indigenous Peoples Rights Organization, AIPP. Today at ILC Land Forum, we will discuss issues on Rangelands and IP territory and food systems. So it is a specific and very interesting. More than half of its land surface is classified as rangelands, where livelihoods of almost more than 500 million pastoralists, including uh, agro-pastoralists, depending, uh, and it is vital for global food security and uh, custom services. Also in Asia, is it seen people? Just recently, last week, the Committee on Agriculture COAC of the United Nations, Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, endorsed Mongolian government proposal to declare International Year of Rangelands and Pastoralists in 2026. It was very good news. It's very important step for, for, for all of us. As this COAC meeting, the importance of international way of rangeland pastoralists highlighted that it will help to achieve the sustainable development goals and contribute to the current UN decade of family farming and the upcoming UN decade on ecosystem restoration. So today in our session, we also discuss so IP and the pastoral communities, not only food producers, also we are in the pastoralists, indigenous communities are custodians of sound use and protection of land, including grangelands, IP territories, and the ecosystem services promoting. This thematic session today aims to discuss and summarize how pastoralist communities and indigenous peoples are ensuring food security in the climate crisis. 
that they faced. In his strong and sustainable use of range lands in the indigenous people's territory. From today's our meeting expected outputs are, there are only two, three outputs. One is sharing and learning how pastoralists and indigenous peoples contribute to food security and how to solutions on food resilient residents by restoration of land, territories, and resources. And secondly, to document knowledge, product on the initiatives and potential areas for collaboration with non-ILC actors, intergovernmental organizations, and on recognizing rights and supporting pastoralists and indigenous peoples on food systems. So today, our session will consist in following parts. In first part, we will have presentations and speak and ideas or grassroots organizations and IPs where I will moderate now. And second, Q&A session, questions and answers, which was moderated by Ms. Anu Birna, focal point of SAPA. And third session is reaction is by INGOs and strategic partners, which will facilitated by Mr. Kem Shimre from AIPP. And the end of summary and closing remarks of our session, which will uh, uh, moderated by Mr. David Alessandro Rubio, ILC from Rome. So also we will have maybe, if time, time is permit, we will have some video introductions on the issues, but due to the time constraints, it will be screen at the break time on the, at the end of the, our session. So let me start the first part of the today's session. Today we will have in our uh, session, six distinguished speakers from SAPA, Kappa, and AIPP. So we will have Mr. Tajwaya Vasaya Gul, Kyrgyzstan, Mr. Budwater, Mongolia, Mr. Dinesh Ravari, India, Mr. Faridun Ahmed, I think he will come or not, from Afghanistan, Mr. Norairi Tongumen, sorry, pronunciation, is IAP from Thailand, and Mr. Devi Devi Angeni also from AIPP network. So just a note, I would like uh, time for eight presenter is only in five minutes. And the suggestion to all our speakers, please make your presentation on time. If you exceed, we are sorry, we will intervene you to to finalize your your presentations as as you can. So, telling that, and uh, I also would like to note that uh, please use chat focus in the below of the your screen for any questions and uh, comments. But we will have, as I told, we will have different Q and A session. Right. So. For the this set, I would like now to invite uh, Miss Tajwaya Saira Gul, Kaflu, Kyrgyzstan. Uh, Saira Gul is a young researcher on rangelands in at Kaflu, Kyrgyzstan Association of Forest and Land Users. A bit uh, background on agroforestry. She is very 
active person and young researcher at this organization. Please, Saira Gul. His uh, time is yours. Thank you, Kambarbaite. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, dear participants. I, uh, my name is Sarah Gul. I'm from Kyrgyzstan, from Kyrgyz Association of Forest and the Land Users. Uh, today I will uh, present about activities and the innovation on agroforestry for family farming in Central Asia. Uh, if you let me, I will start my presentation. Sorry, Harapi, can you, someone, display the Saragulis presentation? Uh, thank, sure, you. Sure, thank you. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, topic uh, of my presentation is activities and uh, innovations uh, on. Uh, please, next slide. First slide, it is short information about Central Asia countries. Mm. Uh, so, uh, from the first slide, uh, you see the map uh, and the, on the map uh, of the countries of Central Asia. Uh, they are Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, and the Mongolia. Uh, as you can see from the map, uh, the countries of Central Asia um, uh, are landlocked. In the 80% uh, land of Central Asia uh, is uh, <clears throat> located in arid zone. And the main of uh, activities of the population, the most of population in Central Asia, it is agriculture and the animal husbandry. So you know every year. Please next slide. Uh, every year, uh, population in Central Asia is increasing because it. Uh, <clears throat> Every year, the customer wanted to do land to, to uh, pasture land and resources is growing also. Uh, uh, climate change also impact negative to the land uh, to natural resource uh, in Central Asia. And the most of land uh, used for agriculture is uh, are subjected <clears throat> so this uh, issue uh, of land degradation and the desertification in Central Asian countries is a, an urgent uh, problem. And the, it has a to local ecosystem negative impact on the life of population and the, uh, and the economical development of uh, Central Asian countries. Mm. And of course, it uh, has a um, negative impact to, to farm, farming and the food security. <clears throat> so we go and the, these uh, issues, problems, needs, uh, uh, many sectors from all sectors, governmental. Please, next slide, please. From neck, uh, from many sectors, non governmental sectors, the holders, they should together decide uh, to find decision. Um, uh, decision. Uh, so at the present, uh, at the present, one of the effective uh, direction to solve uh, 
uh, to solve about the problems, it is a uh, agroforestry. And the role of agroforestry, it is important for improving the ecosystem, adapting and mitigation climate change, ensuring food security, and others. <clears throat> the farmers uh, uh, can use agroforestry for two reasons. Uh, first of all, by using agroforestry, uh, farmers can um, increase their uh, economical stability and secondly, they can optimize the management of natural resources which uh, they are depending. And uh, from the one area, uh, the farmers can get uh, many assortment of agricultural, agricultural products. Mm. <clears throat> so, Next slide, please. Next. Well, as you know, as you all know, agroforestry is a, a system of farming on one area of agriculture, which combines uh, the cultivation crops and the uh, livestock with the trees and shrubs. The pictures uh, here you can see how farmers use using agroforestry on his land. Uh, farmer uh, on from the one areas can get many assortments of agricultural uh, products. Uh, for example, he can graze li graze livestock. He can get harvest, make highway, grow fruits, uh, and the uh, others so uh, he can uh, by using agroforestry farmer can effectively use his uh, his land his uh, land resource so i have it is uh, all what I want to tell. I wanted to tell briefly. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, Sairagul. So, from your presentation, we understand that, that agroforestry is important for. Uh, For what you saying that is uh, important for improving our landscape, so it may also impact on food systems and the rangeland restoration. So that's one way how civil agriculture can be benefit or system or landscape. Thank you, Sairagul. Thank you for attention. Mm -hmm. So now. I would like to invite Mr. Budbatar, National Federation of Pasha User Groups of Mongolia. Budbatar is consultant to the National Federation of Pasha User Groups. And he is also a researcher in working in field on with Pasha User Groups. So so your experience is welcome. Please, Ms. Budwater, time is yours. Yeah. Good afternoon. Uh, can you open my presentation? Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Budwater. I am a consultant of Mongolian National Federation of PASA User Groups. Uh, I would like to introduce my uh, organization firstly. This is can you see, uh, all everyone can see our logo. This is uh, my organization's logo. This is Chief of Mongolia. Yeah, 
Mongolia has uh, five different livestock: camel, horse, sheep, and goats. You know, this is Mongolia nation of Mongolia. And then, can you next the slide? Uh, next slide. Okay, our uh, presentation consists is uh, four different topics. First, this uh, resistant recovery class concept of Mongolia. This can you see a map and uh, challenge of herders in Mongolia, and and then establishment of pasture user groups and sharing best practice of resistant monitoring to Central Asia, this, uh, in Turkmenistan. And next slide. Uh, this is a uh, rangeland recovery class of concepts. Uh, we established uh, 2014, we uh, developed different concepts. concepts. First, uh, five different class. First class, uh, first class is uh, plant community is uh, at near first condition. It means it's not degraded or very slightly degraded. This uh, requires one to three growing seasons for recovery from minor changes. Uh, second, is, second class is uh, slightly degraded. It means plant community is altered, rapidly recovered, three to five years growing season. Yeah. For example, stocking rate reduction, uh, seasonal deferment, rotational, uh, Third class is plant communities altered and make five to grow five to ten growing seasons. It means it's a uh, moderately degraded area. Yeah, uh, it is uh, uh, stock rate reduction, seasonal development, and long-term rest. We need two long-term rests. And uh, class four is local loss cave plant species, invasion of noxious noxious plant species or alteration of Hydrology that unlikely to be recovered for all decades to many decades without intensive interventions. Uh, last class is a very, very degraded area and it means extensive soil loss and erosion, salinity, something like that. Uh, next slide. Uh, this map is a recovery map of Mongolian rangelands. Uh, uh, this is uh, 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 Mongolian national, can maybe many of people can see this uh, report. This is uh, five different uh, recovery class. First class is 20% is Mongolian all of Rangeland. Second is nine, uh, 29, third is 16, fourth is uh, 12% is degraded. And then next slide. Uh, for example, the fourth, uh, fourth class is very uh, degraded area. It means the started area is very difficult to re restoring. Uh, difficult to, because Mongolian residents is very big area. Yeah? And uh, very difficult to irrigating, difficult to some overseeding, difficult to um, cultivating. So we uh, organizing some pasture user groups. Uh, this is students of Mongolian herders in Mongolia. First is rangeland certification and rivers are drying. More than 5,000 rivers, lakes and ponds. And edible plants for the livestock are Exceeding is so 65 of total residents after it and degraded to some extent. The soil is uh, wind and water relation, uh, excess breathing. So can you yeah. can you make slides more big? Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. So also last one is for uh, decreasing of herders income. One herder household lost an 2.6 million Mongolian Tugruks per year due to resident degradation. Yeah. Can you next slide? Okay. Manage, ah. 
we are, our organization is merging some uh, concepts. It means uh, past user groups concepts, management improvement, health incomes, and increased health. Sorry, health school share common range lands are organized and established past user groups uh, currently. Uh, there are uh, 1,500 past user groups. Uh, past user groups created plan on how to use their pasture. Pasture, uh, past user groups established long-term resident use agreements with some governments. Some it means uh, something like that in um, province and district. Yeah, governments that meaning companies could not be licensed their rangeland. Uh, 1,000 past user groups have rangeland use agreement between governors. And then past user groups started discussing and making joint joy decision. Also, we are sharing uh, our uh, practice, the best practice of rangeland monitoring. Uh, uh, we participated 2018 or 17 in in Ashgabat in Turkmenistan. Uh, we organized a three days uh, workshop. First, we have a workshop. Researchers presented a detailed presentation of foundation of uh, rangeland health monitoring system in Mongolia. Uh, uh, our topic was ecological potential based rangeland health monitoring program in Mongolia, uh, Dr. Olgama. And rangeland monitoring methodology and key indicators. indicators. Uh, myself was presented at that time. The second day, we also organized the field demonstration. The first part of field demonstrated is that the site selections uh, and how to select sites, monitoring sites, and defending the landscape, soil, and vegetation community, including followed features with related field tools and equipment, also topography, location the landforms and slope aspects, also how to put in, uh, metadata sheets between soil properties and uh, soil and the plant uh, monitoring equipments. Yeah. Uh, and then also the sharing practice of rangeland and photo monitoring systems. Uh, National Federation past user groups organized meeting and decisions about assessment of rangeland monitoring by photo monitoring methodology in uh, September 2020. Uh, Central Asia Pastoral Alliance members from Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan have participated and shared their practice among rangeland monitoring. Okay, thank you for attention, all of you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Woodbutter. For, uh, for the summary, I think uh, your presentation is, main point is that recovery of rangelands by naturally, naturally ways more successful method of restoring rangelands, which is, is activity, uh, partial user group, groups, and other stakeholders now considering on that. So, uh, uh, now, next speaker is, can I invite Mr. Dinesh Ravari? Dinesh is director of Marak, India, and uh, Dinesh also a member of ILC Council. So long time working on and as uh, employer on, on, on Marak, he has very rich experience. Dinesh is from uh, Western India, where Ravari Malthari or Ravari Herdes. So please, Dinesh, 
Plus yours. Thank you, Isaba. I think uh, I, I I was uh, from last six years associated with the ILC region assembly, and uh, I have some uh, uh, some years ago in 2015's Dakar uh, Global Land Forum, we have a discussion about the food sovereignty. So let me start with this. Uh, so my presentation will be focusing on. Uh, food sovereignty, which is we discussed in 2013 in the regional assembly. And uh, uh, that was the initiated idea by the ILC to discuss about the food sovereignty in the perspective of uh, many other uh, food producers and uh, maybe to talk about the food security and the food sovereignty in this context we have started. So uh, uh, can you just, uh, I don't know, Raisa or Harafik, who is just, can you just go for the next slide? Yeah, thank you. So this is just uh, uh, to understand from the pastoralist perspective. Uh, I think it's, uh, uh, everyone can hear me, huh? I hope so. Yeah. So uh, uh, this is a perspective from the pastoralist that uh, uh, when, we, uh, when we have some of the marriage, uh, when female marriage from the pastoralist community and we, we provide that does particularly some of the, uh, some of the like we call it chandra, which is written here in the, this uh, presentation and that Tamina. So it is just to give a gift to the girls uh, who can sustain their livelihood and she will be not dependent on the, on the any families, no, from the, that uh, respective where she is married. We have also concept of the, from the food uh, sovereignty of the, uh, we give uh, milk to the, to the uh, farmers community and farmers give us grain and uh, barber to help for the many things, which is the community system, which is part of the system you know that about. We have also for, uh, about the distribution system. We, we, we give uh, like buttermilk in many times in a free, free uh, to many people. So this is just, just to sovereignty. We, we call it sovereignty of the people. We call it sovereignty of the, of the community. Next slide, please, Paisa. Why, 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 why we are, we are discussing here about food sovereignty? Because it's, it's really about the, uh, to talk with in the context of the range line. Uh, it's, uh, in the globally, we have a lots of issues of uh, increasing issues of the hunger people's, no? And malnutrition. And uh, just the community who migrate from the each place, one place to the other place uh, with, the, with the kettles, they can just feed this uh, and fulfill this issue to sort it out through the, uh, through the, food sovereignty and which is have already exists in the community when they migrate to it. Uh, also about the many companies have a uh, marketing system and processing system which is in hand of the companies. So uh, 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 it's needed to discuss now from the ILC perspective and from the other actors also who are like SAPA and CHAPA and in, even, even in discussion in the AIPP in the, at the regional level in many organizations. Let, let uh, rather than uh, it's go to the company's house, it's needed to with us. With the with, with our peoples, no, like pastoralists and indigenous people, we know that uh, pastoralists using less resources when they migrate with uh, some of the vessels and some of the clothes, uh, like one or two pairs, and then they, they move to one place to the other places. But they sustain a lot, no? They sustain and they live happily, and they they give many peoples to to live with that, and they use the rangeland, managing large rangeland, no? I like like uh, from the India, we have lots of group who, who migrate from fifty kilometers to five thousand. In Mongolia, we have a groups who migrate from different places, no? In, in Central Asia also, in South Asia also. So, and through using the rangeland to manage and use and access and control the rangeland, they produce the food, which is there is no need for that cost, not just from the, the likes of keeping. Um, rangeland is giving a large number of people's livelihood, and not only the pastries, but other peoples who are using the rangeland, like, um, like you know, some of the crops, some of the other things, which is from the for this for the grasses. Uh, in India, we are the if we can see the India, so we are the uh, provider of food in the livestock keeping. We are the second largest occupation and major dairy needs, which is with us. No, and we we as a livestock keepers, we are having a second largest population of the livestock. Second slide, please. This is just just to you can understand that this is the uh, giving exchange system. Historically, we have this. I, I talk about that. We give to the milk and meat to the farmers, and they give as uh, a grain. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, 
uh, we need to see not through the pastors also if we are talking in ILC regional assembly or or, or this this the thematic session we have a food producer like farmers fisher folks pastoralists agro pastoralists herders gatherers indigenous peoples forest dwellers and migrant workers of course these are the food producers and now it's a time to discuss uh, within the ILC and ILC members about the uh, this all the food producers which is which is maintaining the climate change also if there is a rain also if there is a uh, winter also can manage these peoples are managing and producing the foods and they sustain the whole uh, world next slide please okay uh, uh, some of the countries which is which is already have a uh, food sovereignty in that that uh, national constitution also in the policy also like ecuador has started this is in 2018 in that Countries like Venezuela, Mali, Bolivia, Senegal, and, and many other countries. Uh, is in the ILC we started in 2013, and we have a, a proposed one of the reference group. Marag is one of the group of as SAPA members in that, and we that car we have discussed with the our reference groups meeting in that uh, particularly, but uh, somehow it stopped. So I just introduced today. Uh, that's why it's please, next. Please, uh, uh, summarize your presentation you have only one yeah yeah yeah, yeah. only two slides next slide please these are the some of these principles for the food sovereignty uh, it, it, it is just focus on the uh, food for the peoples in the context of the religion it's a uh, it's giving the some of the knowledge and skill of, of the community uh, it's work with the nature next slide please It's also uh, giving recognition of the values of the food providers who produce the foods, and uh, it's it's controlled by and managed by 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 the localized food system, and also puts control on the locally, which is uh, which is really giving the power to the food production. Food, it's uh, like it's a gift for the life, which is there is needs to be food is not in scarce. Next slide, please. Uh, just just to compare with this uh, one of the slides which uh, you and discuss started in, about the food system in 70s uh, uh, and uh, 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 via campaign Sina it started in 1996 food security is a technical concept from our perspective but this sovereignty is a political concept food security is focusing more on access to food only uh, and like schemes but it's giving focusing on access to productive resources and uh, a, a, a food sovereignty is giving target group to small farmers, fish folk, and pastures. Next slide. This is last slide from my side. Uh, just to for the discussion, of whatever in this session or also, uh, it's it's increasing recognition of the pastures in essential for food sovereignty. Uh, it means the uh, region needs to dis discuss about the food sovereignty, recognize identity of food producer like pastures, encourage the the traditional livelihood identity in food producers it means to motivate them food sovereignty will be ensured only when the pastoralists will uh, when when we migrate or we will mobile then food sovereignty will ensure if we'll stop to that that will be it will be different incentive to the food producers which is needs to be discussed about that develop a um, infrastructure for the food producers and capacity building and access information for the food producers some of the special zone for the indigenous and pastoralist peoples and uh, some of the laws which is needed and I'll, after all you need a alliance for the support of the pastoralists i think uh, thank you very much for uh, I, I take two minutes more isaba thank you very much once again and thank you dinesh very comprehensive speech from your presentation we can conclude that uh, uh, Managing uh, large rangelands, the pastoralists wish doing. It's uh, important for food. And it's specific and it has different values. And uh, also, we need to recognize pastoralists as food producers, essential producers for food and uh, for food sovereignty. Thank you. Thank you. So can I, uh, we are sorry that Mr. Faridon from Afghanistan can't join today because uh, due to the, the internet connections, as Mr. Anu confirmed, is that right, Anu? So therefore, I now invite uh, next speaker, Miss 
Moraeri Tongumen Chong, sorry for the translation. Uh, she is one of the prominent indigenous women leaders in Thailand and uh, actively engage on women issues, promote indigenous knowledge in the sustainable natural resource management. So, Ms. Moraeri, please, time is yours. There is a translation, I feel it will have on, on the similar translation by provided by RCO. Thank you. ค่ะอมุชเปอร์นะคะชื่อพี่น้องแอรี่ทุ่มเมืองทองนะคะจากเครือข่ายสตรีชนเผ่าแห่งประเทศไทยค่ะก็ถ้าพูดถึงธรร
and we do not keep for ourselves only. We share this different kind of seeds to our uh, member in the community as well. However, without the land rights recognition, we cannot continue this knowledge. We, the indigenous people in Thailand, we are living in the protected area. That's why we don't really have the rights over a land. There are many factors that make us to feel like we don't have the land security because it's duplicate with the national park reservation uh, park and our young generation the youth they also go away from the community for us as a mother and indigenous woman i would like our, my knowledge to transfer to our young generation it has to be our community is based on the community level our food is not come from the supermarket in the shopping mall but it should be come from our national resources from our own farmland we are taking care, we are sustainable use the resources based on our belief and customary practices. Different indigenous groups, they have uh, different uh, ritual and ceremony. We organize the celebration for the rice when we got the new rice. during the new rice festival there will be the exchange of the seeds so without this kind of uh, festival or our ritual the young generation also will do not have the knowledge uh, so as a women we try to maintain these practices thank you Uh, thank you, Miss uh, Naroeri. And uh, we understand that or whole land tenure is important people who are living mostly in area of protected areas. So that's also issues on for the summary. Thank you again. Now I would like to invite uh, uh, finally today our last but not least speaker, Ms. Devi Angriyani, sorry for Penny. She is a president of Firamu Puan Aman, a session of indigenous women. She has been working for almost 20 years as indigenous activi activist in Indonesia. Uh, her field of experience on building a monument among the indigenous women and the communities. So, Miss Abby, please, time is yours. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hijaba, uh, and hello, everyone. Um, it's a very grateful to be here together with you, uh, together with the ILC, International Land Coalition. I'm a part of that before. Uh, with a different organization and I want to say Mr. Hijaba hello and <laughs> I hope you still recognize me okay uh, thank you very much and 
Next slide, please. Uh, I'm working with the Indigenous Women Association of the Archipelago. We had uh, 2,386 uh, members in uh, uh, 55 local chapter around Indonesia. Okay. Um, I want to uh, to show you what happened in Indonesia now. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, if you look at this, uh, I want to, I show you this photograph to convey the reality of indigenous territories in Indonesia that have been dominated by various concessions such as um, mining, agriculture, infrastructure, and other development projects. Yeah. And if you see this situation, uh, we cannot say, it, uh, can we have a, a space uh, for uh, indigenous people because the the whole the indigenous territory is already uh, changed there are only uh, one and a half million customary forests uh, recognized by government out of the 18, um, 11 millions uh, registered by ancestral domain registration agency it's uh, it's not government bodies but it's a uh, our our uh, registration body for indigenous people. Next, please. Deforestation has made a major contribution to climate change. If you see the, uh, the situation. Um, next, please, uh, slide. I just using the UN uh, slides uh, to show how the impact of uh, um, deforestation uh, to contribute the climate, yeah. Uh, but for indigenous women, understanding climate change is not uh, something easy. They can only respond to change in weather or season, which they can no longer predict. Floods, draft, uh, draft uh, no longer follow the same pattern based on their experience. Uh, next, please. If you see these photographs, uh, you can see how the indigenous women match their uh, uh, indigenous territory. It's so very simple, it's so very local, uh, there is no uh, technology, uh, technological, uh, technology uh, to high technology. They uh, changed the customary uh, territories have resulted in limited resilience for them. Development and practices of indigenous knowledge are no longer easy to do. The issue of criminalization increases from year to year. Uh, requires facilitation from outside parties for technological adjustment is so very important now for indigenous women situation. Um, sorry. Yeah. You, can you move to the next slide, please? Yeah. I want to be a simple one. If you look at that, uh, these photos, a lot of photo, this is the, a part of the indigenous woman resilience to facing the uh, climate change and the pandemic situation. Uh, how's perempuan aman working with the situation? We using engineering participatory mapping and census uh, containing disaggregated data on indigenous people, especially for indigenous women, have helped build critical awareness of indigenous women. They using data, I mean the indigenous women using the data and the facts to identify climate change uh, adaptation ever and pandemics in the community. Currently, uh, the expansion of the collective gardens is a part of this effort to build the community food sovereignty is expanding now because uh, um, they are using uh, this uh, pandemic situation to more active in uh, uh, gar gardening. Solidarity between communities that is overstock send it to families and communities who need it. And indigenous knowledge in particular, uh, how traditional food preservation has strengthened again our revitalization. Uh, indigenous knowledge is uh, getting, uh, what you call, uh, significant now in uh, community. Um, and the other one is using the food sovereignty uh, as a uh, issues. 
indigenous women have responded to the pandemic situ situation to push for policies that recognize uh, indigenous territory in the village uh, area from the village government. This is the uh, administrative uh, by government. On the grounds, now we have two villages in North Sumatra are recognized and are still lobbying for policies at the regional level. Um, this is the what we call a local regulation to uh, recognize indigenous people's rights. In East Kalimantan, indigenous women have uh, proposed two areas for customary forests that will maintain water source for the community. At the national level, Perempuan Aman is actively involved in discussing the implementation of the Indonesian and Norwegian government uh, climate change funds to ensure that indigenous people's rights and collective rights of indigenous women become a part of project implementation and regulation. We want to say we, we, we try to transform our movement from the local to be more active in the whole levels. Uh, with the situation now, uh, because we, we talking about the food sovereignty is a part of the indigenous women power. That's why we want to uh, push uh, the government to see and promote our um, models, indigenous women um, resilience models to be a part of that. Maybe they need to be more scaling up the uh, models, yeah? uh, how they, they can use uh, and duplication to other areas. This is the... Thank you. Yes, just one point. Okay. We just want to say stop conversion indigenous people territories and stop criminalization. Thank you, Mr. Hijaba. Uh, thank you, Ms. Uh, Devi. Uh, it is nice in this presentation that we know that understand that indigenous people's territories also change it now, as we are saying, pasture land is degraded. Similar uh, and uh, for the resilience of COVID-19, indigenous peoples need support from the government, donors, and also owns guarantee, self guarantee. Also, it is nice that the movement for indigenous peoples rights from local to national and the regional meetings. So thank you again, David. And uh, now thank you again to all our speakers. And we have a little bit time uh, uh, behind. We have a little use more time. But uh, and, uh, for all of you introducing your lessons and experiences and for pushing our multi-stakeholder cooperation, collaboration, and achieving resilient food systems through the restoring grangelands and the indigenous people's territories. Telling that, I, I want now to hand over for the question and answer section to, for our, to our distinguished speakers, to Ms. Anu Verna Sapa. Please, Anu, now. Uh, thank you very much, Hijaba, and uh, thank you very much all the speakers who had presented on various issues. Uh, I would, uh, we don't have much time, we will take 15 minutes for question and answer. I would di uh, directly go to all the speak, uh, all the participants, if anyone of you have any question to the speakers, uh, please go ahead and ask the um, speakers. You can either write in chat or unmute yourself to ask the question. Uh, while we wait for uh, the questions, can I uh, just uh, uh, ask all the speakers? Because as I see, there, uh, there are a lot of participants who have rich experience in uh, uh, working on uh, land restoration, climate change, uh, and food resilient uh, systems. Uh, can I uh, can I ask uh, any one of you who can who wants to answer? Um, you know, uh, Devi has uh, pointed out 
uh, COVID-19 situation. So do you have, uh, do you, anyone wants to uh, you know, present their learnings and uh, what are the challenges COVID-19 has presented to the uh, pastoral communities or uh, indigenous peoples uh, um, with relation to the food security in their respective regions? Um, anyone of you who wants to answer? Uh, I think uh, one of our speakers, uh, Nori, uh, wants to know. Nore, sorry uh, for the <laughs> sorry for uh, wrongly spelling out your uh, name. But uh, yes, over to you, please. Thank you. Uh, I would like to share my experience during the COVID pandemic and our indigenous people. There are many challenges. Because numbers of indigenous people, especially the young people, they live in the cities. Related to the food security, we have the land, farming, we have uh, agriculture production where we can sharing with other people, not only among indigenous people, but also the people who live in the city. Number of people cannot return to the village because of the quarantine and restriction. So our indigenous people in Thailand, we thinking how can we help our people who live in the city? Because for us, we have enough food and we have food security in the community level. That time people uh, lose their job, so they could not have money to buy food. Therefore, we gathering together, we uh, announcement, make announcement and call for donation from different IP indigenous group to share the rice through the indigenous organization network. So we bring back our sharing system and helping other. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, this is very helpful also to